So what's up? Welcome back to the Grow Family Network. And today what we're doing is we're doing another monthly garden tour. If you've never seen our videos before, check the description below. Because you might not even want to hear me talk right now, but you can go to the description below and you'll see the food forest. Check that out. You'll see our high tunnel, our unheated greenhouse. Check that out. You'll see our raised beds, all those crazy plants we just got from Lowe's. I got that in the description below. Go right to that timestamp and press those little blue numbers and it'll like warp speed you right to the part of the video you want to see. Right now we're out in our orchard and our front yard garden and the kids are out. They're looking like little statues right now, but they'll probably, it's hot right now. So we've told them that they can go back under the shade and wait for us till we get back there. But right here to the front yard garden is gonna be me and the Mighty Bells. We're gonna walk around and show you guys what we got growing. We're gonna start with the garden first and then we're gonna go to our orchard videos. He can stay shy. If he don't wanna go, let him walk. Uh, so first, this is something that I've never grown before but Bells actually bought this from the Philippines, and these are some kind of squash, right? Yes. Do we know the name of these things? Uh, I forgot what they call Filipino it. squash. Yeah. <laughs> but, they is. but we'll show you. We'll show you the squash. So maybe somebody knows what that is, and now we're disturbing the bees yep. that are Working. hard at work. Look, wow. They're really, look at these things. So I guess these are what you call our native native bees. They do way more work for us than uh, uh -oh. yeah, like honey bees. Uh -oh. We got more squash. There we goes. Come to mama. So we got some pretty good production on these. Don't know if these are gonna be uh, susceptible to that squash vine borer really don't know but if you look last month's garden tour and you look at this month's garden tour it almost looks like nothing was here but these things have really 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 put on good which is a good thing so I'm looking around looks like Bells has to go because she has mail so <laughs> So I'll keep it going until the mail person gives her the mail over there. Um, these are some black cream that are actually planted here. Some stuff we had left over. You see we had a little attack of the tomato hornworm. I just never took it off. A lot of times for these videos, I just leave stuff so I can be able to show y'all. If it wasn't for me doing videos and vlogs, I probably would have been taking this off. Um, here is, I'll let Bells talk about the mung beans. So we have a uh, loofah. Actually a loofah, I would say trellis, that we actually put in and I was supposed to put this one on Facebook. It's some old burglar bars. I was supposed to put it on Facebook and I didn't. 
Well, Bev's never sent me the video because we took it with her phone. Uh, so the bush okra are putting on, and you can see them. Um, and look at these babies under here. Really good. My perfect size. My perfect size. If you don't like uh, okra because it's so slimy, let me just take off this part. I'm going to just take off this part and I'll cut that part off later. But if you don't like okra, it's like perfectly, perfectly got The best way to eat them is fresh. See, you don't see all that slime on them? I don't know if y'all can see that, but. But if you like cooking it. Yeah, and if you cook it, Bell's actually cooks it. With um, water just, and vinegar. But just so, a little bit. Yep. Just so, a little bit. We actually got some watermelons that we put in. Here. Just for to try to give us a ground cover something to cover this whole middle of cover up our black plastic hopefully we can get some watermelons out of it now i waited for you to come back so you can tell them about the mung beans Yay. we're excited about it because we took some wind damage from crystal ball which they they were all like standing up so straight and beautiful now they're all like laid down because laid of the down. rain and wind that we had from the storm so this is the uh, kind like you know when it start to be harvested it's so they start to dry out they dried out they will dry it out by their own self and this how they gonna be looking inside oh sorry as you can see this is small green seeds <laughs> and they that's all Stop, Zach. As you can see the greasy, that's how they look inside. Cool. So we'll do more videos on these because this is also our first time actually growing these. And they, actually, I didn't think they would grow this well. So I'm going to take y'all in the amount of produce that are actually on these. I mean, these little things are <laughs> suckers are everywhere. Everywhere in all different stages, just all through it. If you pick it up, you're gonna see that everywhere. So a really, really productive bean. If you go to like your Asian stores, Asian markets, yeah. you'll really see these uh, in those markets, mung beans in the packs. You kind of cook it like you would cook most so beans, beans. Yeah. but it, it's a... It's just green, like looking and they small and then like it looked like they pop, uh, like a, a popcorn, but it wasn't like they just small, stay small, but yeah they do get nice and soft um right here also we got some more you can see these more okra, okra. it's louisiana and it's june so july and august is like right around the corner and what july and august means it means heat so you have to have in your heat loving vegetables that's the only thing that's going to make it in the middle of August without you you miss a watering on these they'll they'll survive you miss a watering on other vegetables more than likely they won't but they're really getting big so I'm gonna back out so you can see they're actually really 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 getting a nice size on them and that's our front yard garden let's go ahead on and look at all of our trees so you remember we planted in the banana tree it's actually put on the extra leaf we actually cut all the leaves off and you can look we cut all the leaves off and it's finally putting on another leaf up there and as those once it gets about four or five leaves then we'll cut it back down again to three two or three leaves and let, let it keep growing like that. Uh, whoo, Harari Satsuma. So here's our Satsuma tree. This is what, third year? Yes, this is the third year. And third year in the ground? Producing so good. Look at it's that. Loaded. Loaded. Look at that. Look at that. 
we're going to have a good year on this tree. This is going to be a productive tree this year. Um, this one didn't die in the okay. in the ground when we got the frost, and we got us an okra here. And we had to cut this. Oh yeah, one we got to cut this one out. Not a part of this. <laughs> so this is like the sucker that comes off of your trees. You know them because of these long. Uh, sharp things that's like it's uncharacteristic of the rest of the tree these are the vines or the, these are the branches you want to actually cut or leave them for the swallow not yeah the swallowtail what is a swallowtail? the little yellow and black butterfly oh. that's always on all the citrus trees oh, okay. that little worm caterpillar but this is actually gonna be a nice size look at it we gotta figure out how to branch this up too because it's look at all of these things they're just hanging on this thing this is going to be a good tree going to be a good tree uh back this way still have a tree that we use for grafting practice um our apple tree still got that one <laughs> that one apple uh and this one here but it's not uh putting on any size so uh, this is actually second year going on in the ground for this actual uh, tree. Here we have our Mihu Satsuma having a rough time this year. I probably should do a little bit more work on it, uh, but I think I had it covered a little too long coming out of the winter. It didn't get the right amount of sunlight, so we haven't seen any blossoming or anything on that one. Also, we have a Celeste fig that's coming back from the bottom. You can see that it's coming back up. And Belle's favorite, the Fuyu persimmon. I left these on the ground because the little squirrels got these too. So I, I told her just leave it so we can show that we did have more. So we probably lost a good couple of them. They just, some of them fall off, some of them the birds and stuff knock them off. But we got a few more that's in there that's putting on some size, that's growing, that we're like watching, like, please, 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 please. Save us some. Yeah. Save me some. Please save us one. But it's still a young tree. This is actually its uh, first, first full year because we planted it last year. Uh, behind we have another apple that hasn't put on. It's actually third year in the ground from a uh, bad root cutting. Here we have a graft, and I'm thinking this is the calamine sit, uh, calamandine, and it just a few weeks ago actually bloomed out. Uh, so this is a first year graft, and it actually has bloomed out for us. And you can see if I can get in a little close for you, right there you can see it's putting on some little fruitlets so we're gonna figure out I guess we're gonna find out <laughs> what it is whether if it's the calamansi or if it's the what else I had kamquat or tangerine so one of those is gonna be um, our kamquat this is the one that survived actually it bloomed at the exact same time as that calamansi so it might be the same thing but i don't know we'll find out i mean the exact same time right yes uh so this is our kamquat actually gonna have some nice fruits on this one it always performs well um also two more apples. two more apples that haven't fruited yet all those three apples on the front row actually came from bad root cuttings I can't remember if it was Walmart or Tractor Supply we bought it from Home Depot Home Depot? Yes. Um, um, I mean no the late, late not the these early. yeah those other ones but these were the first ones we got like in when we first moved yeah, here yeah, um, so here we got s some more Satsumas coming on this is actually another Satsuma tree that came back I think this is a brown select if I'm not sure but it's gonna be good and uh, 
the grafted portion of that grapefruit that I grafted on actually hasn't put on any fruit yet but it remains to be seen what it's going to do in the coming years it's growing well so this is actually going to be a two fruiter going to have some grapefruit on one side and some satsumas on the other side they're gonna be amazing yeah uh, another fuyu persimmon all the fruit fell off of this one so now we're just geared toward getting this one to to just keep growing so it's putting on good size even though it got a lot of attack my, I guess it would be some kind of cut worms or something or some kind of wasp but they was going to town on it till we start treating it with the diatomaceous earth and nothing ever bothers these uh, low quads, these Japanese plums, nothing bothers this thing. I never see any pests on it. We don't, we really don't water it. We really don't fertilize it. We don't do anything to it. We just leave it alone. And sometimes maybe that's the best thing is to just leave things alone. But what we did do was we planted some green beans below it. Since it didn't give us any fruit, we planted some asparagus beans so that way it'll be able to fruit uh, somewhat by being a trellis for us. Uh, we have one more apple tree here that didn't do anything. And also we put in our elderberry cuttings over there, but we haven't seen any sprouting or anything off of them yet. But as soon as I see some sprouting off of the elderberry cuttings on the outside, I will do a video and show you. Uh, so let's go to our front yard garden all right so we're on our front yard garden and what we did here was we actually pulled out the onions that were here last month and we probably left a few that had some seed heads on them and we've actually planted in right behind it some honeydew melon and some more loofah that you can see so I'll show you that uh, actually on the back on our watermelon mound we are getting some but this was like some of the last planting that we did just looking at it and you can see the bees are hard hard at work not going to bother you but they love this thing this uh comfrey plant looks like it blooms year round and it's always some food or some pollen for the bees to get from the comfrey plant also was surprised to see that in June we snow still peas. have snow peas. We actually letting all of these go to seed. But I couldn't believe that we still had peas growing. When they germinated, I was like, oh, let's leave it, see what it does. It's gonna die because it's gonna be too hot. But it didn't. They actually they actually grew really, really well. I actually have some in the back bed that's growing as well. So was kind of strange but you just never know blueberries are going out so a lot of the kids favorites as far as this one the strawberries are still producing but the blueberries you mean once you eat them they're gone said they're gone daddy they're gone <laughs> uh, here we have our sweet potato bed interplanted with malabar spinach and ginger and uh, turmeric we kind of just got a lot of stuff up in here Onion. onions green onions and koala loo and a beautiful lily. Lily. lily yeah beautiful lily uh, right here we have more watermelon turmeric bush okra and I want to let this uh, I want to let these seed out one more time for me so I can get some more seed. Then I'm actually going to just take those out all the way. We're going to amend and fertilize this bed in the middle to get it ready for the fall. Get some carrots in there. Uh, so we got the exact same thing on this side. I got a bush okra on either side. And I want the watermelons to kind of fill up the middle. So anytime the watermelon are kind of coming out the side, I just come and push it back in. So I want the watermelons to fill that up. And we want the cucumber plant to run up this trellis right here. That's what we want. Let's head on 
to the food forest and we'll start there. All right, so we've gotten rid of the little man just to give Bev's arm some rest. Let her walk through. So here we go, we're in the food forest. What you're gonna see here is some, some more little lilies that we've planted just for color. I just planted them because I found them on clearance. Mm -hmm. And we walked straight into the idea. You haven't been seeing many videos on the high up on the food forest. And the reason is is we saw some snakes over here. Yes. Yeah, some like little copperhead snakes. And actually, I told y'all before about this netting that it actually, though it stops the animals, it also catches snakes, which is, I guess, good if it's a copperhead, but bad if it's a snake that we really want, like the king snake. And we've actually caught one king snake in them, but there was two copperheads were in there, so I don't know if there was mating or what, but they actually got caught up right over here. And once we actually came out, it actually was caught right over here. Once we came out and saw them caught up in the netting, that was almost like it for my idea of having the the, hu the food forest, the understory, not the understory, the cover layer or the ground cover. And so what I'm doing now is I'm going to try to keep every layer in the food forest but the ground cover layer I'm going to have to let go because I have to keep this I have to keep the grass cut as low as I can because I think being alive is more important than having the food forest or my kids coming out getting bitten by a snake that's hiding in all of this uh, leaves and mulch so that's why we actually kind of haven't been doing many videos over here because I wanted to get the grass cut real low and give it time for the snakes to know it's nowhere to kind of nowhere to hide anymore on this side so with that being said let's start off over here on the corner with our first tree and then we'll walk back that way so what do we have this is our label orange yeah. red label orange red it looks like we're going to get one or two this year yeah yes we had got no three Oh, oh, look at that! None on the bottom, but this is our. We just planted this one this year, of course. So this is another first year tree, um, and we're what we're playing with here is the understory. the The canopy is our huge, huge uh, oak tree. You can see it is called a live oak. So this is what we're playing with. It is growing a citrus tree under an actual canopy they're growing slower than the other trees but you can look at that deep dark color it keeps them so green underneath the oak tree uh, here we have a blueberry now this one I haven't been seeing the blueberries blooming like the ones that were that are outside in the Sun uh, so I'm, I'm knowing they do need some Sun uh, this one we got a lot of new growth and I didn't spray it because I haven't been doing anything to these trees under here mm -hmm. and you can see the leaves are evident that the leaf miners have actually gotten into them. So I kind of started spraying them a little bit with some neem oil now. Just when I start to see that new growth, I'm only going to try to keep the new growth sprayed. The leaf miners really don't mess with your older leaves. They just want that new growth. Uh, so, but still got the comfrey. That's going to feed the plant. And one thing we, with our garden, I'm probably not going to do this again next year. One of the reasons that I caught the snake was because I had to try to protect the garden part over here from little pests that want to eat them. The squirrels. Squirrels, and it's because it's right under this oak tree and these nuts come off and they want to eat everything. So we're going to go away from that next year. Um, go, go, peace. Not yet. I'm <laughs> not done. He wants to go inside to watch some TV. Uh, this is an actual uh, grapefruit that I need to, we got it, it's doing bad, but we just need to repot it, give it a bigger pot. Um, this is the pineapple sage, and this is... Elderberry? Elderberry, Belle says, I'm 
thinking it is. And then we had another. Improve my ear lemon is here. You can see that. Oh, oh that looks good. Look at that. Got them. Yep. So, uh, and once again, the one that's outside is doing way better than this. Here's another red navel. Probably gonna plant one of these navels uh, in our high tunnel. But this is another red navel. These things are so sweet. These things are so good. Probably one of the best citrus that I've actually tasted uh, homegrown. Um, tangerine is over here and I see one. See, looks like Bev's is gonna get a tangerine. Let me walk on around. Another blueberry. Now this one actually put off some fruit, but it's gone because I ate them while I was out here. Sad. <laughs> no sugar. No sharing. So this is a sunburst tangerine. You can see that. We're gonna get a few. Gonna get a few tangerines this year. So another first year. Mostly all of these are first year trees. Um, besides our Meyer lemon that we had like two years. Um, peach tree that's actually coming back from being cut back. Um, also we put in some blackberries. I thought that was a raspberry. The raspberry is behind you. Oh. So we put in the blackberry. It's a thornless variety. What are juke doing over here? Uh, some juke found its way. <laughs> a juke found its way everywhere. And we have the raspberry. It's still not doing anything. This raspberry and this goji berry is still not doing anything. And I'm thinking it's because it's just, it probably the sun requirements for it is higher than what it's getting underneath this canopy. Um, same thing, we got an olive tree, same thing. I think the sun requirement for it is more than what it's getting here. It's more than what it's getting here. Uh, so that's it for, that's it for the food forest. That's how it's come along. Um, and on the tree, of course, we have, you can see it from here, but on the tree we have, that's the highest it, it's gotten. That's the uh, passion fruit. That's the highest it's gotten. Um, once again, probably because of the sun requirement, just not getting enough sun to the base of that tree to actually affect the growth of it. Uh, we're gonna pour these over, not, not right now, but we're gonna get these out of here too. The, we just had these in here uh, trying to see what they would do, how they would grow. Yeah, and we'll go down in there a little bit later and get these potatoes out of here. But once again, this is where the snakes were, so I'm not going to let my kids play with over here. I'll give you some later. I'll let you do the ones at the back. Um, also, we got another peace tree. Doing well, didn't fruit or anything this year, but it's doing really, really, really well. Apple tree. <laughs> so here we are at the back raised beds. And what we've did here is we've planted out some of our little heat loving crops. And what we have here is some beans, cow peas. All right here on the back we have asparagus beans and we have some purple potted long beans. There, hopefully they do well. Um, we actually put in some celebrity tomatoes. We found that Lowe's for a dollar. It was in the clearance section so we just got them, transplanted, put them in. Um, here we are at Amanda's garden. And wow, it's really doing well. So we're gonna just run through it and the kids out. Just gotta watch for the little spiders. But I got a good little picker right there. He's gonna pick through some of that and we'll show you. Look at Bev's eggplants. Look at Bev's eggplants, eggplants. <laughs> look at that! Look how beautifully colored these things are. What's the variety, Bells? The shiku. Shiku, shiku, shiku. Shiku, shiku, shiku. And look at these. 
The tomatoes. Look at these tomatoes up in here. Yes, yes, yes. The color does do it justice. Um, one thing I do want you to see is, look at this cucumber plant. Y'all remember how beautiful that cucumber plant was? It's basically finished. And the only reason, once again, I haven't pulled this out is to show y'all on these videos. You can see how this one is going out. I'm calling this out with the old and right there in with the new so as this dies out what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut these out as I cut out the cucumber vines I have more vine and beans that are gonna come up and take over this trellis and go right back up so as one thing goes out one thing comes in and they need to be really uh, red for it to be the sweetest it's gonna be the orange ones are yeah you can still eat them but red or the better red or the better so what we're going to show you is here i was trying to hold this giant marconi pepper and as it turned red it actually gets so soft that it fell off and you can see where it was right here but what we did if you can look here you can see those seeds that are right there. Go ahead on and take this. Take you some soil and just cover those seeds. And guess what you're gonna have? Plants that you're gonna be able to just transplant around. You'll be fine. So this is Amanda's garden. Let me swing around. Look at those. What you got an idea, Bev? We can leave the old airport Look at now. Those. Since it messed up, we, we can leave it all the way to turn it to seeds. Oh, that's mm, so that'll be our seed egg plant. Yep. Since it's already it's too hard and it's, you know, messed yeah. up. And leave. they don't want to come back and eat on that one. We tried to leave it as a decoy, but they don't want to eat on it. So, uh, I don't know. But these carrots, these carrots are going to seed. This is going to be our first time saving carrot seeds. We tried in the past, but it was like they wouldn't go to seed for us. So this year, for some reason, they're going to seed. Um, I've actually left the zucchini plant. It's basically done. I'll probably take it out, but I wanted to show you all. For those that hadn't seen our zucchini video, and you just watch our garden tours, what we've done is we've planted in some, some uh, southern peas for a cover crop. And as we pull out all of this stuff, we're letting all of these peas actually take over the bed. And these are just the purple hurl peas or cow peas. And we're going to let these just take over this bed. But of course, still going to leave these beauties. Um, more tomatoes. The tomatoes are really kicking butt, right? Look at that. They're really, really, of course you can. So we left a lot of tomatoes on just for the just for the garden tour. We really don't leave this many tomatoes out. So we left them for the garden tour so people can see how good they're producing, that they're still producing. We got some that's still in the green stage. Got these jalapenos. Yes. We have more. We have them all over the ground. Long cayennes. Really, really, really. I see tomatoes. Yeah, we got tomatoes everywhere. Look at little. Twist it. Twist. Why it's not coming out? It is coming out. Oh, alright. Good job. Alright. Look at my little sea monster. I got one, Daddy. Huh? You got more than one. You got a lot up in there. Good, you. Looks good. Uh, so you can see these better bush. I told y'all this is a good variety. It puts out. It holds. This thing is falling over. I need to push this back. <laughs> I need to push this back so I can let some of these things hit some sun and ripen up. And the same thing we've actually got peas planted up in here to try to take over for a cover crop because these when they are actually are finished 
they're gonna they got they're not gonna keep making like an indeterminate variety they've actually set what they're gonna set and you're gonna get some more tomatoes and that's done get the one way over there on that side <laughs> I'm not cold, I'm hot, man. Good job. That's nice. You got it? Let's, Let's see, see it. it. Let's see Let it. Show see us. It. Show us. Show us. Ooh. Back it up. Grandma gonna love y'all. Grandma gonna love those babies. Uh, so the same thing for here. You can see how, how this is actually going out. It's going out big time. So... We got some more uh, purple potted peas, beans actually, that's going to take over that aspect of the garden bed. Here we're trying to get some cucumbers to come up. Might be a little too hot for them. They're not performing well. You got it? <laughs> but once again, uh, this, this plant here has taken a lot. We haven't really come over here and really, really gotten in to getting all these bugs off. So they got more bugs on this one, but we still got a lot of tomatoes. And this is actually grown from seed. So it's like a, a smaller variety, uh, but it gives this reddish orange color and got good flavor to it. We actually planted that. We saved some seeds from a Trader Joe's that we got and we actually had them two years so far and we just planted them this year uh, this is another variety that we actually planted from seed so we don't know what the variety is because we just bought the tomatoes from the store Trader Joe's and actually saved the seeds because we liked it the way the tomato tasted um, sugar cane we've actually planted so we took yeah more cover crop coming in. We got turmeric right over here coming in. Of course, you see the cosmos. Somebody thought this was a a left hand plant. The <laughs> Those people that's old enough know what I'm talking about. But this is just cassava. My finger, they call it. Yeah. There you go, more sugar cane, and that's basically. Oh, we're not finished with our raised beds, right? So we'll come over, pass up these giant trees, and here's what, look at this. They're finally starting to produce. You wanna see how long this is? Stand up by this, Zach, uh, Zion. Hey. Stand up right here so we can see how long this is. You know side of it? <laughs> He's scared, that's not a snake, man. <laughs> So look at this, it's the size of our baby. Wow, so they're finally starting to produce. So you can show them Bell so they can see, cause it's all green. That one's ready to come off. So let's pick it. It's like the size of uh, Bell's hair or something. No, my hair is I think longer. hair longer. Longer? Mine is all the way down. Let's see, put it on somebody's back. Let's see how long that'll be. Let me see, turn around. Wait. Hold on. Whoa. -hoo. Oh, yeah. It's long there. Uh, so, we got more coming in. We love these beans. These are our Asian beans, our asparagus beans. Our stock is getting low on our seeds. Last year, what happened was we actually had a lot of seeds and it actually got caught in the rain and by us having so much humidity here it actually all molded on us so our seed stock got depleted on us but this year we're going to try to get our seed stock back up and running uh, more this is all lemon balm turmeric another squash that i put in here you can see our sunflower looking good ginger you'll see throughout the garden we have ginger and turmeric planted all over the place you see how crazy our asparagus is growing 
starting to spread for us which is really really good really starting to spread really starting to spread ginger up in there look at that we just it's the good thing is we know what we have and we know exactly where everything is so that's how we can kind of plant here plant there same thing on this side we got the asparagus beans lemon balm we probably need to thin this down and then look at the rosemary this is our second rosemary plant that we have in the ground we have one in that's over there in the middle but you can't see it but we know it's there uh here is bev's bitter melon bed show them this bitter melon show them oh my goodness we got, big one over here. We got some long ones coming in we got big one here you got the new ones yeah new ones. and this trellis is the awa yeah so bells actually made the trellis i looked at the i looked at the video i was gonna put this on facebook but when i looked at the pictures bells had on a little yeah, girly shorts <laughs> so I couldn't post it because of the clothes she had on while she was out here actually making this trellis but this is actually some uh, the little green things from our little ultimate tomato cages and she just got some twine and yarn uh, and tell them you just basically, basically just yeah, like made just, squares just tie this on the side tie the bottom part together like on the side and then like make a square as it yeah, is. Yeah, just running just, lines yeah, and line squares. Lines and then, you know, like you can use like uh, I think it's like six, six of this because it's one, two, three, four. Yeah, six of this is thick, and then just make your line, you know, straight lines cool. for this. So um, maybe next year or for the fall, when we do us another trellis, we'll do a video with Bell showing people just how to make that with just some sticks and twine. And you can have a nice, nice, nice trellis. Also with the bitter melon, Bev cooks the leaves yes. with soups. So you, if you don't like the bitter melon or you don't want to wait for the bitter melon to actually grow, grab you some of the leaves. Um, hey, with, the, the, the lips and the whole thing. Bitter melon is the best cure for diabetes. I'm not a doctor or anything. Like yeah. you know, I don't say it. So they say. Tell them that. So they say uh, bitter melon is the... Uh, diabetic uh friend if you can stomach the taste uh these bitter melon i don't know how we got these i don't know how we got these you'll probably never see these little small bitter melon how we got these we don't know but they came up out of our compost and they're not as strong even i can eat them the ones that you get at the store they're super strong super bitter these are really 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 like mild so yep. we can actually eat a lot of these, which is good. And we have a lot of these. So what we got in here is Malabar spinach taking over. Now I don't eat that much Malabar spinach. So what I have been doing is I haven't been stopping them from growing, but I've been cutting them and I've been feeding them to the chickens. So it is a little food source for our chickens. Yes, some jute. And we got jute down here. Bell's, another one of Bell's favorite greens that she makes soups with, like the bitter melon, like the the moringa. Moringa. Yeah, just Bell's is just a soup soup girl with greens. Uh, sweet potatoes, just leaves, leaves, leaves. Here's our seed starting table, and Bell's has. Uh, Got another mango. Another mango coming out. And look, guys, I got this uh, sugar apple. Finally, one of them coming out. <laughs> they had a struggle to it. Uh, more moringa from seed. We have some tomatoes that Bell was actually bought from the Philippines. Papaya, Bell's bought from the Philippines. More moringa. Sweet potatoes we use for slits and leaves. More moringa, and then here, same thing as our. Oh, let me show y'all this. These are the sun gold. Sun these are the sun gold tomatoes. tomatoes. And I tell you, this gotta be the, the sweetest tomatoes on the market as far as 
it's like it's not a tomato. It's like it's. I, I guess tomatoes are fruits, but it's like it's a real sugared up fruit. Mm -hmm. um, as this trellis goes out, getting too hot for these cucumbers. As it goes out, we've actually the same thing. We planted in some more beans to try to get them to vine up on to that trellis. Um, this is our Meyer lemon that we used to replace our lemon that was here that died from the snow. And look at the size of these lemons. I was small. This one big. Look at the size of them. I mean, there. This thing is. Everybody always hear them saying, you know, the tree is loaded, the tree is loaded. Now I understand watching one actually that you planted from your hands actually get loaded, loaded, loaded down with, I mean just loaded down with lemons and it's still blooming. It's my first time growing a Meyer lemon. Alright, so now we're at our Lowe's hall where we got 15 all together we got 12 fruit trees and three blueberries. blueberries we actually didn't have this variety of blueberry which is the rabbit eye blueberry and this one cost us eight dollars i try to tell people when buying buying blueberries always buy the biggest kind you can at the cheapest price because when you buy those little small ones, a lot of times they're just not strong enough to handle being transplanted and what you give them and try to give them as much uh, rainwater as you possibly can. Uh, so we got like two or three sit uh, kumquats, two or three limes. I got a Persian lime. We got some pears and some apples. Even found a fuyu persimmon that's right here um, someone asked me when I was saying uh, one of the avocados was in bad shape I'm glad that my neighbor actually ended up buying that avocado and I didn't want to get it because it was 20 what it was let's see what it was uh, $8 it went down to you see how bad this thing looks my neighbor actually I actually repotted it but it was all like all out of the soil and they gave it to my neighbor for one dollar so i guess it is good to ask them to go down on the price and they actually did so um Ari is right here pointing at this beautiful beautiful strawberry at our strawberry tower I actually left this one when i saw it yesterday i didn't let her pick it so we'll let her pick it two days she loves to just pull and pull mm. oh. uh oh a little damage little damage on the back so mama's gonna take that off for her Here and now she has a beautiful big strawberry face look at those little lipstick got some lipstick uh, so what I what I actually do I'm gonna show you something what I've actually been able to do is every now and then don't tell them but what you can do if you have a planter like this is you can actually throw a few on the back side I actually had about five or six back here and I actually gave them some they know where I got them from that's what I do. I put a few on the back side sometimes just so in case I want to get one or two, I can actually. <laughs> Look at that. This thing's fruiting already. We just got this. In case I want to, I can get. Because this little thing here grabs every red berry she sees. Uh, so here we are. We're at our container platform. We got a Persian lime. This thing has been in a pot for two years in that same pot. I need to get it out of that pot. I'll probably put that one in the ground. Um, we have our granddaddy bay tree. The bay cuttings we did are not doing good, but the bay cutting that Bells did, let me put it this way. The bay cuttings I did, two of them have died so far. One of them still hanging on, but the bay cutting Bells did, 
you can see how good it's doing actually um now bev showed me yesterday we actually do have i think this is the kusha that i actually first i thought it was a cucumber plant a bush cucumber plant i was putting in here and it turned out to be a kusha and you can see this vine goes all the way around out of that little bit of pot and it's coming down to this real 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 beautiful squash um, it's setting on our blueberry plant <laughs> so we're gonna just leave it right there for it to have a place to grow on to um, the French sorrel you can see the kids are Zion probably eats more of it now than anybody when he comes out um, and this is our pomegranate and Bell's has a this thing has gotten big in this little pot so if you're growing container garden you can grow moringa in pots and we'll show you bells will show you a better moringa even better than that this is the the little strawberry fig that we bought from online our cuttings mulberry cuttings we still haven't put out mixed in with little plant and this is bell's baby I've seen how many times have you cooked off of this moringa? Five, six. And it just steady puts out. It's doing really well. It's actually went into this little double trunk mode right here. It was small when it was. Small. Yeah. So before she up potted it, it was really small, barely making it, and for some reason, it's just taking off really, really well. Another mulberry cutting, some more grafting practice to the back of some citrus that died off. We just threw it back in the pots. Uh, more of our loquats that we've grown from seed. You can see all of those. It's the one of bay leaf. Yeah, that's one of my bay leaf cuttings. It's dead. I tried. The only thing I did different though is I tried these with, I planted them in an oh, aloe vera yeah. cutting and it didn't take as well come back over here sweet come back over here ariana gotta watch her this is the thing about doing a video come on back and they know you're not watching so she tries us to see if we're gonna see her uh more cuttings um this is actually miss c actually as soon as this fig this is the kadota fig and we finally 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 got a fig on it so never had that kind before hope to see it these are some more bush beans i think i put back here and our last Mulberry. blueberry, blueberry. <laughs> come on don't need no water right now come on we'll give it some water later come on mama um once again this is our Logs. Logs that we've cut. Bells use it for a barbecue and we're gonna bring some to mom's this year. Cold compost is what you call that. That means get something, throw it there, don't worry about turning it or nothing. Over time it'll do its own thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we was gonna make this into a sweet potato bed. If you can see I had my little sweet potato in there, but the kids think it's a sandbox, so this is where they come out when they're out here with us in the garden. They stop right here and play with their little small shovels. Once again, the bee is out on another uh, comfrey plant. You can see them working, doing this thing. This is a pineapple pear. And this is why I didn't get the pineapple pear at Lowe's is because I actually have this one already. Um, this is our chayote and we have it in this huge container and it's actually doing really well as it's going off all the way up the tree now here's another one we got this here. is all from seed from yeah just bought the chayote and planted it so hopefully we get i just want to get one i just want to get one this year you can see her, she's up into the little dirt box. I just want to get one this year. I'll be happy with that. I'll be happy with that. Uh, so here we go. Head into 
the high tunnel and passing yes ma'am banana square look how beautiful beautiful it looks what we're gonna start doing is we're gonna start doing the chopping the leaves off it's it's a method that I learned watching Leia Farmer 73 and actually I'll do some videos on that if I can get them to start growing pretty good I probably should have been fertilizing them harder than I have been but I've been so busy uh, so I'm gonna start going in the chicken cage getting out some of that fertilizer and starting to chop those leaves the water content or the water uptake is good it's filled with water on the ground so I just gotta get the fertilizer there um, so here we go this thing here has a whole bunch of everything blueberries bells hibiscus look at that bells tabasco we got a grapefruit i think is on the back side we have a fig in here you can tell by the leaves we got figs on them ghost peppers on this side we even have a mint so here diversity is ruling the day here on both sides I'm gonna show you on this side as well more hibiscus we got a thornless key lime we actually bought I think two two or three more of these at Lowe's on sale um, for people that's looking to get a little citrus in their life thornless key lime is good because it grows so well in the container so well in the container um, ghost that one was a habanero pepper this is the ghost pepper you can tell from the little funky look me and ariana actually were out here doing a video on this ghost pepper and we we're gonna do a little hot sauce video probably i'm gonna do a little hot sauce video but she was out here doing the first part with me low quat mixed with something else we don't know what it is and more aloe vera that came off our larger aloe vera plant and we got some more pups that are coming up yep. um, right here do us a favor Bevs and I actually set up this blue tarp right here if you can get one of these uh, small pots and see if you can dump them over and let's see what we get stay over here oh she's going she's leaving me you got a date you got a date come here look we got to come dump this over. Oh, you got your boyfriend okay. here to get you? Your man here to get you? He got a nice car. There ain't nobody here to get you. Go by mama. On, Go by mama for something for a wash thing you. <laughs> Let's see if we have any potatoes in this gallon. I just had one potato. And I said, I'm going to throw it up into this gallon pot to see, <gasps> could it produce potatoes? Potato. Huh? And so it's just an experiment. I said, okay. probably going to have to leave it a little longer. So we're going to leave the rest of them a little longer. Just something I wanted to show y'all that we tried. It's just one. Eh. One little one in that hole? No, thing? look. Oh, should there we go. Should be leaving alone. Maybe we should have left it for a little while longer. They could have got a little bit bigger. Look. Yep. Anything else? Shake it, shake it, shake it. No. No. No, that's it. That's, <laughs> that's the old uh, mama to me. All right. Potato. Cool. So we'll do a potato harvest mommy, video mommy, when we actually flip mommy, over mommy. this one. And we'll leave the rest of them. Look back here. I kind of left this sugar cane and it's actually growing crazy out of that small container so we're going to leave that sugar cane and we're going to head inside the cool Daddy, what that Dad, dragonfly look, got right there look what we have we got this the baby. tomatoes i think that's some more look like he done he eating his head uh -huh. whoa hmm. Mommy. Let's go inside of the nice, cool high tunnel. Starting off at the front of our high tunnel, we have our variegated lime. And you can see that it's actually putting on some nice 
size. I don't know what it's called. Girl. Variegated, not lime lemon. No, I'm saying no, variegated. It's a Eureka. Please. We're not finished yet. Show yeah. them. Say it. Go, go, peace. All right. <laughs> so we kind of, yeah, we got to, they ain't big enough for us yet. Yeah. Uh, so coming in to the high tunnel, we got our cucumbers that are still holding on. Probably going to try to get some seeds out of some of them. But we're going to probably finish harvesting the rest of them. But, yeah, but they still got cucumbers under here that are some good sized cucumbers which you can see um, so Bev is over by her what you got? spinach, water spinach water spinach water and then spinach. they got moringa eyes water spinach, moringa let's do this let's go to the back of the hot tunnel and then we're gonna work our way up to the front because I want you to see from the back it gives a little bit better perspective of how the high tunnel looks and then we'll walk our way down from the back and Belle's gonna tell you everything that's in this high tunnel I actually put in some more banana plants over here in this little wet get it off of you Get it off of you. All right, so I actually planted some bananas over there. There was some bananas we got for a dollar last year yep. at Lowe's, but we finally decided to plant them, and I'm gonna see what they do. We're gonna let them do that thing over here. So let me back up here. Oh, yeah, one, hold on. Still haven't done anything out here with the muscadine and grapevines. So this is the high tunnel from the back we're actually gonna bring this down here to where all our roads are gonna stop here and everything back behind where Bev's is standing everything back this way is we're gonna plant like fruit trees and berries back here mostly fruit trees our citrus trees uh, so here we are we've been had this here for what like already two years, years? two two Three. and a half years yeah. This is one of the first Tabasco that after we did our first garden when the winter was coming We actually took this one out the ground dug it up and bought it back here the first year We had our high tunnel. This is one of the first plants We planted here in the high tunnel and it's actually doing really 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 well yeah. And it looks good. I mean it it just doesn't stop so peppers in a high tunnel You probably can just plant them and let them go I don't know how long. Yep. Uh, yeah. Tomatoes, beans, beans, tomatoes, and llama beans. And this side, this is the boot beans. And then other side, we have more eggplant. That's the shiku. This is shiku. And then next one, we have the green long Louisiana one. I think it is. Yeah, Louisiana long green. And then more tomatoes, more beans, and more eggplant. And this side we had. They can oh. tell Bell loves eggplants. Yeah. <laughs> more uh, bell peppers. We have. Hot peppers, jalapeno peppers there. And then more. Then we have planted just pl the heat, or uh, thing that's planted. Yeah, basil. Basil. We have more peppers, California wonder peppers, more pepper, more tomatoes, more tomatoes. We need to harvest and pull out tomatoes and plant something else. More tomatoes. More eggplant. More eggplant. This is the Hansel. Yeah, Hansel. Yeah. This is the. Uh, cayenne, long, long cayenne pepper. Yeah. yeah. Ginger. Ginger. Look, how pretty Look at how our carrots fell over from the wind. Just what the storm did to us. But because the tops are heavy, we're trying to get those seeds. Trying to get those seeds. More ginger. More tomatoes. Somebody, 
I want to get right here. We need to take this one out. The last little tomato on this one, we'll take out. We got a cassava growing up. Somebody uh, said that I, I went too fast over these tomato plants last time. So I didn't take these tomato plants out. I left them here so y'all can see. I wasn't trying to hide bad looking tomato plants. I just didn't, I just don't stop at every plant, but that's the plants y'all asked me about with that. Um, more tomato plants. We got strawberries on the ground, more bell peppers, more bell peppers here, bell peppers here. Actually, these have been about two years. We have more turmeric, more tomatoes. Span around to our pineapples. pineapples that actually do better in the winter and fall in the high tunnel than they do in the summertime. In the summer, they actually start to get that yellowy look. More tomatoes, more turmeric, more ginger. I told you, we kind of got ginger just sporadically planted throughout the property. More tomatoes. We have our banana on this side. Hoping to get something out of you. Hoping to get something out of you. This thing is... Yeah, is, if we don't get anything out of it this year, we're going to have to take it out because it's just getting too tall. Or somebody told me that I could like dig out one side and bend it a little bit. So maybe I'll try that to get it to kind of slant. I don't know. It'll work. Maybe it'll work. So we planted out more moringa, turmeric, ginger, and look at Belle's celery. Celery, looking beautiful, beautiful. That's some good looking celery. Time to start juicing some of that. I actually took these out the front raised beds because they wouldn't last outside of the high tunnel as far as the heat so bought it in the high tunnel gonna get some more time out of it look at that more tomatoes Bev's huge moringa and it got some little flowers on it so pretty yeah hopefully, hopefully. we might get some pies yep. what do you think yep. think we gonna get some pies and bell peppers more bell peppers like second year <laughs> third year whatever more you'll probably see these bell peppers now look at these got some kind of white flies on them yeah but we've been treating it and starting to get that new growth again so still alive still doing well more tomatoes more tomatoes and our dwarf papaya that we ordered online yeah it's doing good getting thicker it's getting thicker down there at that base look at this one this one might not be able to make it but what i think i might do is cut this back cut the tops off and see if i can get it to shoot out some new growth more carrot seed more carrot seeds to come yeah Longer. probably gonna have some good seeds this year finally gonna have our own carrot seed factory yep we have so, more look at that we gotta get them little white flies under control neiming <laughs> we neiming it we neiming it and we have our Sunfinity Sunfinity Sunflower. So here we have more tomatoes. I need to replant this back row because nothing came out. Let me see if I can show you. Nothing actually came out here. So I'm going to have to replant that back row up to here where these beans came out. But we have been putting in some, uh, I think there's like a beefsteak variety of tomato more tomatoes we actually got these for a dollar at Lowe's so we bought them more peppers those are like serrano peppers and of course this thing came back from the depths of nowhere because it was doing bad dropped all of its leaves this winter because I forgot to water it and this year is coming back but it's probably not going to fruit this year but I'm just glad it's Back. alive yeah glad it's alive so let's get out of this high tunnel that's it for the high tunnel besides uh 
some more stuff we planted, some bush cucumbers, uh, Filipino peppers, squash, tomatoes, some store-bought pineapples. We stuck in there along with Bell's water spinach. And you say that's a uh, avocado? That looked like. I guess. We'll see what it is in a little while. Yep. Um, and we're off to go check out our watermelon. watermelon mound. We almost done, almost done, because all we got left is the chicken cage that we actually did. So let's check out watermelon mound. Who in this getting hot out here? Yep. It's about what, 12 o'clock now? Yeah, probably. And it's getting scorching hot. But we got some success going on over here. Got a Spider tomato. Man, watermelon. And Speaking on it. Somebody want to see you, Mr. Melon. Somebody want to see you. Oh, no more. Yeah. No more peeking. Covering back up. Covering back up. No more uh, Up onto the mound. Bells goes. And look at these cantaloupes and melons we have up here. I think this one is ready. Look at that. You think you got some that's ready? Oh, oh ants, Mr. Oh, ants. We got an ant pile up here, but look at that cantaloupe. Is the vine on that side? Mm -hmm. Oh, not ready yet. <laughs> oh, still got a see. little green, still got a little green on those. But look at this, these things are cantaloupe are everywhere this year our first year we trying to go back i told you I, I daddy like ran me daddy killed me with the cantaloupe so i almost couldn't look at a cantaloupe for years but i think now it's kind of my taste buds are kind of changing back to where i'm understanding the difference in the taste of homegrown versus store-bought so i figured we're going to go ahead on and grow our own and then I'm going to say whether or not I really, really can eat them again. But we got more on the back side. And then more. You got more honeydew. Honeydew melons. You can see that. Black paper is really, really far. Oh, that's a huge cantaloupe up in there. hard to get to but more honeydews more cantaloupe they're intertwined so in a few I'm gonna say about a month we should have a, a real real nice harvest of these that's watermelon mound works perfectly it's just a pile of dirt we put up this year, last year we didn't have all this black paper over it. This year I said I'm going to put this black paper over it. Uh, I don't know if it's going to work because I know that black kind of draws more heat. Um, but I guess more heat or more grass. I would rather take more heat on them. I just have to water them a little bit more. Last year I probably only watered it like twice. So this year I kind of been going up in there and watering myself a little bit just because of the black paper. But as you can see on the other side where our black paper fell off, I would rather deal with the black plastic and the heat on this side than deal with all that grass that's growing up on the mound on that side. So look at all the babies out here looking at our dad. Say, hey mama, hey mama. They are finally got their extension on their house. Yep. We finally went ahead on. See, man, we're doing more for y'all out here than we're doing for ourselves inside. So build them their extension on their house for their family to have more room to go around. Um, we actually have put in, as you can see, where the stakes are. Actually, some fig cuttings. And a few of them actually did, uh, did grab, but a lot of them didn't. So we do have some more fig cuttings that we've been rooting in water. That we're probably going to put out here maybe in the fall or next spring. Uh, so surrounding our chicken extension, we actually have what? sunflowers that we planted in our uh, glass hedge, so to speak. And we'll do a video on that. I actually finished the video of last week, I think. Yeah. And we'll actually release a video on this whole 
extension. So Bez was trying to show you. Let's look at the heads on these starting to starting to pop out. I've actually had to come out because of because of the storm. I've had to come and put poles on these because the storm just bent these things down to the ground. The fig is going to be our surrounding uh, tree. Figs and mulberries we're going to put to surround our chicken cage. And because the reason why we're doing uh, the figs and mulberries on the outside is because they're deciduous. So our idea is during the winter time as they grow larger over this fence line they'll be able to cast more shade they'll probably grow in through the fence with the branches where they'll be able to cast more shade inside where the chickens can come out and you know chill out under some nice shade and during the winter time when they actually need more sun the fig tree is won't even have leaves on it so it'll allow more sun to come through to the chickens during the winter time um, also inside the cage you'll see we have banana plants and I put those inside because bananas love nitrogen and if you can look around I'll show you that we've actually had to protect I don't have anything over the top yet but we've had to protect the banana tree by putting some around the stalk so the chickens won't peck at it and we put bricks on the ground that way the chickens can't scratch at the roots. And that's all you need to do to protect any small tree, any plant, anything that you have inside of your chicken cage. It's protected, the chickens will leave it alone, but it'll grow and be fertilized. But it has to be something that can take a lot of nitrogen on the inside. So I think, whew, I think we've come to the end of Tour. Our garden tour. I did while we walking up. I'm gonna show you this because we actually did miss one bed. Yes. <laughs> and I didn't think about it till I was I was back here doing uh, the high, the high tunnel. tunnel, and I think I was saying something about the eggplant. Oh, when we said the Louisiana green was back down the high tunnel, it it occurred to me that we had passed the. This, uh, this is Natalia's, oh, yeah, and, and it actually has some more eggplants and that Louisiana green long, long eggplant in there. And more, more cucumbers that need to be. Yeah, so we're taking out the cucumbers, and the reason why, like I said, if I wasn't a vlogger, this stuff would have been out, but because I'm vlogging, I like to try to visually show people what we're doing. Um, so we started about what a month ago if not more the uh, okra while the cucumber was already here so now when we take out when we take out the cucumber vine we already have the okra established inside the bed same thing here when we take out this cucumber vine that's here we've already planted in you can see that we've already planted in what we want to take over that actual trellis so um, that's what we're doing here we have some more stuff in here too that's kind of hard to see um, but as we take out this cucumber vine more of the other stuff will kind of open up and start taking over on its own and as always we got some comfrey that we can feed to the chickens and use as mulch around our plants as well so that's it anything else <laughs> that's all it <laughs> anything anything else you could think of before we finish this. Nothing else. I think that's else. it, yes. That's all. I think we had mentioned everything already. That we got. So, we got more work to do. Now, uh, now, since we've done this tour, we actually got to take out all of the cucumber vines that are not doing anything, and you can see them everywhere. We're going to take those out. Then, Basically, everything that, that's ready to come out, the zucchini plants, we're going to take those out. They're not doing anything. I thought they was. We might try to wait for one of them to do something, but for the most part, I'll probably take them out. We was trying to get some seeds out of this dinosaur kale, but 
the bugs got to it so I don't know if it's gonna seed or not maybe so maybe not um, but other than that we're waiting on carrot seeds and we're out with the old in with the new yep. waiting on this to go to seed Bell said we're gonna try to keep that for seed our little decoy eggplant yep. uh, and that's it Bells I think that's all it I think so that's all it less oh yeah oh we forgot about that our, I call it a shower, shower head. <laughs> a shower head uh Sunflower. sunflower because of how the head looks like a little like little shower heads that's how a shower looks inside so it just think of it was like raining down a little bit of water let me finish this off I want to say thank you for watching for watching and as always grow 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 peace peace thank you guys